All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to Immortality. Um, I'm wearing the same clothes because it's the same exact session. I quit for a few hours and was like, damn, I really want to play that again. And, you know, so far all we've done really is just cycle through clips. And you might be wondering, you know, what's the appeal? I'm just like, I want to know more. I just want to know more about, like, what is going on here. And I, I, I read some Steam reviews to make sure I'm not, like, totally off base the way I'm playing. And yeah, it, it's literally what I said. It's like her story. You're just, instead of typing in the database of, like, keywords, you're looking at items and it's going to show you different scenes uh, based on the items you cl uh, clicked on. And, like, let's say you click on a vase. It, might sh it won't show you that exact vase, but it's going to show you uh, another vase in another scene. And, um... Yeah. Uh, also, I think I figured out what's wrong with my mic constantly cutting out. I have um, a backup uh, power USB port because I've already used all the USB um, slots on my tiny fucking um, computer case. My computer case is super small. It's like a small box. And um, I had my microphone plugged into the backup USB port. And I don't think that was enough power. So it was occasionally not able to power itself and it kept cutting itself off. Because what I did was, I was like, maybe that's the problem. So I switched my mouse with my microphone, and I plugged my uh, mouse into the backup, and I plugged my microphone into the um, computer. And all of a sudden, my mouse, every few seconds, it, it just, it would freeze. It was, it would lose power. So I think that was the problem. I hope that was the problem. I, it appears I'm able to talk fine now, so we'll see if that was the issue, and hopefully I fix that. Um, but let's continue with this game, man. I am... I am reeling to find some more scenes. Okay, so... The last scene we stopped at was right here, and we didn't click on anything else in this scene. Um... Let's see what we can find here. So this was the, the 1990 movie. Oh, I gotta write down these movie names. Hold on. That was another thing I was gonna do. Hold on a second. I have a really bad memory. And it's honestly, like, shockingly awful. I wonder if it's the medication I'm taking. But, like, my short-term memory is horrific. And I can't remember the names of these movies, or even the name of our main character, to be frank. So I'm going to write down a little notepad over here on my second screen. Uh, Marissa Marcel. Uh, Ambrosia. Abre Ambrosia. Ambrosio, uh, Minsky, and Two of Everything. And Two of Everything is the 1990s. Uh, Ambrosio is like... When is Ambrosio? I can see this. Oh, it's it's right here. Uh, 1968. I just wanted to write down like the dates here. I'll actually show you guys what I'm writing. Um, and then Minsky's 1970, just so I remember these, these important details. Um, 1999, that's what I was looking for. I don't want to, I want to be specific. So pretty big, ba pretty big gaps between, because I think, remember that interview after 1970, somebody died on the set of Minsky and she kind of disappeared from the public for like 29 years to make another movie finally. And um, then after that, she disappeared completely, so. Um, Marcel, oh, whoops. She followed us up with Minsky, a collaboration with her DP from Ambrosia, uh, John Durek. The movie was never finished. Marcel was not heard from nor for over 20 years until 1999 when she reappeared in the film To Everything, reuniting John Durek now a successful and acclaimed director, with Durek's death, this movie was also shuttered. So, so far, somebody died on the set of Minsky. We know that. It was an accident because of that interview that with that guy. Um, and then two of everything. I think John Durek is the guy I'm talking about here. Um, John Durek's the guy with the beard. And he was... Uh, I, think it, I think this is him. And... Um, and then he died after this movie. Oh, I'm so curious. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I'm ready. I want to know more. 
Let's do this. Yeah, this guy right here. I think this is John Durick. Let's um let's rewind this. Does he say John or anything? What does he say? Must feel like a new start for you. Can uh can you talk about what happened with your previous movie? Now I'm sure everyone here has read about this or heard the gossip. Uh, I was making a DP, director of photography. I think this is him. I think this is John Durick. Okay, hold on. Let me write this down. Um, guy with a beard. John uh, Durick. I don't have to spell his name correctly, but I th I think that was his name. This is the guy that died after uh, the 1999 movie. So John Durick died. Oh, whoops. Died in 1999 uh, after two of everything. Worked with Marcel as a director of photography on Minsky. Okay. Because this guy might be related to why she quit. Uh, and this is what I wrote down, exactly what I said. Okay, let's do this, guys. I'm so excited for this game. After that, we felt it was in everyone's best interest that we stopped the movie. Yeah. We decided not to finish. Okay. Let's go back to this scene, because we didn't actually click on anything in this scene. Um, let's go all the way back. Actually, I don't know what I'm even talking about. Let's do this right here. Is this the beginning? Nope. Okay, so the motion control race is going to play back what we do now. First, that's John Durick. Sarah, Amy, we play Anne. When we composite it, Naomi's performance will disappear. Story of my life. Barry, what do you uh, think of the dress? So this is the 90s, and he is now a, a successful director after working with uh, Marcel as a director of photography on their previous film in the 70s, Minsky. And while she's disappeared for 29 years, he's been directing movies and becoming successful, and he dies after this movie. That's why he looks a little bit older here. It's 29 years later. Makes her stand out. When Lee Lockwood sees a surprised look on Anne's face, she says... I think he's the key to a lot of things here because... He's the only constant between the movies that she's made, right? What type exactly is that? That's Lee's Actually... Oh, man. Didn't he work on her with Ambrosia, too? Did he work on all three of our movies with her? I'll have to look that up after... Is there a, um, no, I I'm too curious. I have to do this right now. Sorry, guys. We're going to play this game. I promise. Marcel followed this up with Minsky, a collaboration, a collaboration with her DP. Oh, so he was the DP on Ambrosia. Okay. He worked. I think this guy's the key to everything or at least the key to something. On Ambr because he's the only constant, as far as I can tell, between all these years. So he died in 1999 after Two of Everything, after directing. Uh, and then he worked with Mar uh, Marcel on the uh, photography on Ambrosia and also collaborated with him on Minsky. Okay. Perfect. All right, let's keep going. Enough of this. Let's actually play this game. I just wanted to write all that down so I remember like exactly who this guy is. 
And what's going on here? Uh, that's not the scene I wanted to go to. The one I just got. Super cutter. Uh, it was this one. Amy Archer. Director John Durek. Yep, here we go. Exactly like, like we thought. 1998. So, one year later, this movie was... Well, actually, it wasn't released. None of our movies were released. But, um... Yeah, they were making this movie, and he is the director now. So, yes, it is John Durek. Take one. We are accurate. We got one character down. Has it ever occurred to you that you're not... In oh, wait, wait, wait. We're fucking up. Barry, what do you uh, okay. think of the dress? Swanky. Mm -hmm. It's a vintage Dior. Does it suit the tone? Makes her stand out. And when, when Lee Lockwood sees a surprised look on Anne's face, she says, women need a certain kind of attention, especially as they age. Not all women, but the type of woman I am. And what type exactly is that? That's Lee's line. Okay, let's go. Tell them I'm dangerous, compositing test, take one X. Action. Lee wants to know why you stopped seeing him. People always want to know why. Has it ever occurred to you that you're not in your right mind? <laughs> Who's to say? I'm in no position to judge myself. Nothing interests me less than explanations. It means nothing to you what my feelings are? You look older. You'd like for me to hate you, wouldn't you? Well, I can't, and I won't. So what should I tell him? Tell him I'm dangerous. Cut. Let's switch. She is dangerous. She we fucking killed our main great. character. John is paying you twice for this. <gasps> John is supposed to pay me. <laughs> you think it'll work? Sure. You got Sarah and Anne, Lee Lockwood and Bob Dean. Two murders, two of everything. Biblical. What's the word? Thunderbird. All right, so since we're kind of on this John kick, let's see more scenes with him. Oh, dude, this is like, this is a uh, 1968, I think, or 1970. And that's John, a young John. Hold on, let's go all the way back. Okay, this is 1970s, the middle movie. The one with art. Goodman? His name's John Durick. Is this, is this not John? Or is that his character's name? Detective Goodman. Oh, okay, it's his character's name. Never mind. Franny said you'd be coming. Would you be happy to answer a few questions? <sighs> Honey doesn't like cops. And none of us like cops. Cops think we're deviants. They like to beat up on deviants. Well, I'm not most cops. <laughs> There's Marcel in the background. <laughs> Marissa <laughs> Marcel. You can see her in the mirror. He stuck his stick in my ass. What did she just say? Oh, that's exactly what I thought she said. I fucked a cop once he stuck his stick. Okay. He stuck his stick in my ass. <laughs> oh, you prove of deviance? Is this about to turn into a four-way? You like art. If you knew about artists, they're the worst. Are you wearing a wire? Uh, no, no, I don't need a wire. I have a, I have a notepad. <laughs> Oh, write it down. What? We hate cops. Okay, um, 
So, Franny, was here Wednesday night? Oh, yes. We had ourselves a big party. Oh, the whole night? Uh, what time did she leave? She stayed here. On this very sofa. Bare ass naked. <laughs> uh, did she take any photographs of the party? <gasps> you like taking photographs, <laughs> Mr. Detective? Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, so oh, These actors are doing a great job oh, for the I game. Feel pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> Interesting. Who's this lady? Yeah. What's your real name? That is my real name. Carl Greenwood Jr. My father was Carl Greenwood Sr. Sounds like a movie name. Didn't you tell I a movie star? <laughs> Carl Greenwood. <laughs> You're smoking weed. What's your real name? That is my real name. Carl Greenwood Jr. My father was Carl Greenwood Sr. Sounds like a movie name. Didn't you tell I became a movie star? <laughs> Before you said there can be too much freedom. Yeah. What kind of freedom? Uh, sexual freedom. Political freedom, financial freedom. Mm -hmm. I feel like society needs some limits, rules. <laughs> I don't mean to be provocative, dear, but I wonder if it's seeing other people have freedom that worries you. Is this, uh... Uh, how many women have you bedded, Carl Greenwood? Somewhere between, uh, 150 and 200 women. <laughs> <laughs> so, you appreciate the freedom to fuck 200 women, but would you be happy for those women to go and fuck 200 people? You're fine if I've fucked every person in this room? Well, have you? <laughs> you only live once. Natasha. <laughs> Wait, you're, you're okay with this, John? <laughs> Why me? Am I the boss, Marissa? <laughs> you are. That's John, okay. Yo, conservative slut, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I was queer, you'd think I was a hero for that. <laughs> but you're not queer. Okay, I'm going to be happy when Douglas comes back and we can all pick on him for being a dinosaur. <laughs> Douglas gets a pass because he's an icon. Mm -hmm. To Douglas. To Douglas. <laughs> Pretty sure somebody had a boob out in that scene, but it's a game, so YouTube can go fuck themselves. Uh, I see her, she's in the background. This is like a cast party or whatever, she's right there. You can't escape me. Oh, no, hand, never mind. Now you can proposition me. Oh, let's let's go back. Minsky. 1970. This is the second film she made. You could tell by her ridiculous haircut. Scene 5B, take one. So John directed this one too, huh? Did he direct all three? No, he was a director of photography. Action. On the first one. So he directed the set. Okay, one second. I gotta write this down. I'm not gonna remember if I don't write it down. Uh, no, not on- Yeah, he did direct, uh, to everything. Um, he also directed... I'm not gonna say collaborated, I'm gonna say directed. No, no, no. Worked with Marcel's director of photography on Ambrosia. Um... Direct, direct... Did um, Minsky. So, uh, Ambrosia, he was the director of photography. Minsky, he directed two of everything he directed. Uh, what do I want to save this as? Immortality. Yeah, that works. 
Oops. Now you can proposition me. You argued with him yesterday morning? Most mornings. It was how he woke up. A grudge in the heart. His diary doesn't mention any kind of argument. This music sometimes gets creepy. I don't know why. Also, if, if it sounds quiet, it's because it is quiet. Like, I have it turned all the way up. Hold on. Like, some of the the sound, like, the music's loud. The movie, I have all the way turned up. You want to do what to me? For the record, those words were deliberate provocation. Ruby confirmed the cause of death. Asphyxia. She puts the time of death at 11 p.m. Should I be hearing this? Did we get it right? Hey, I've been here for a few hours. You should arrest me or give me something to eat. Where were you last night? I was at the warehouse. It's a studio, a hangout, a party. I crash there sometimes. Write the address for me. some food and take her home. The fuck was that? Is he a good detective? He thinks he's the best. Beautiful. Oh, I wasn't joking. I the table. Um... Detectives don't have time for cakes. Minsky. What was that? Sorry, I didn't hear that. What was that again? Okay. We may have discovered a clue. I mean, it makes sense. Come on. So it would make sense, right? John works with her through all these movies, throughout all these years. And maybe they have an on again, off again relationship, or maybe they're they get married or something. That I mean, we don't know. And then John dies in 1999, and she's known this guy forever. You know. I don't know. C thirteen C take two. There's a built of Frankie's in New York. Who said that, by the way? Is it her? If you want to see a Chinese bus, that's beauty. That's too much fun. You're talking. Do you like to watch detective? Seems like a very detective kind of kink. But you're not a bus. Detectives don't have time for kinks. <laughs> The job is the kink. <laughs> Frankie said to her. Just do nothing. Get the guy in the mirror. I get the tape recorder again. I get papers in the background. Um. Let's get this guy. I don't know if I should be re rewinding from the beginning, but I'm going to. 38A, take two. Because we're probably going to have to watch all these scenes again 
to like pick out like we're if we want to find all the scenes we're gonna have to like use this eye thing on everything we see to try to find new scenes in the future right now it's easy because we just started so every scene is new but eventually it's gonna start recycling scenes it happened in her story too where you would just like spam keywords to find a new scene because you've already gone through almost all of them action Taking Olga Lebanev to the interview room? Sure, I can grab her for you. Now she's quieted down since they brought her in. So this is the scene right before the scene we just saw. Interesting. Scream a blue murder in Russian when she got here. Yep. Jesus fucking Christ! Cut! Let's let's go with this guy again. Vanilla, we both can't. Scene eleven B, take two. What are you doing here? I just came to pick up some things. So the police tape. My fingerprints are all over this place anyway. Not to mention my ass prints and tit prints. Is there such a thing as an ass print? You came to pick up what? No. Stuff that I made before they put his name on it. A portrait of the artist. He looks unhappy. He didn't like being looked at. He said my work was amateur. Is that what he was working on before he died? He was trying to reduce my face to pure form. He painted over each line 50 times to remove any meaning from it. The pure essence of Franny, just lines and colors. He liked my lines, but all the rest was a distraction. That's vandalism. Now it's worth more. Did you ever read his diary? I wrote it. Every morning he would have me read his letters to him and then I'd write down his thoughts from the previous day. But there's an entry from the day he was murdered. If you've already guessed it, just say so, detective. I found the body. I couldn't process it. I wrote the diary, got ready for the show, and headed out as if everything was fine. When you found the body, was there a mask? Some That's my camera mask. doing that. No. He was naked, there was blood. First, I thought it was a game. Sometimes he would act weak, so I wouldn't want to leave him. But... Hmm. Can I ask you about these marks? I hope you didn't get too hung up on these, Detective. Each mark shows that we had sex. The symbols show the type and frequency. Vanilla, we both came. Oral, both came. Rope play, we came. Anal. Okay. You asked. He was active for an older man. Minsky and the rest, art is a procreative endeavor. A masculine act. To paint me, he had to fuck me. To paint me fully, he had to fuck me. Fully? Well, the killed Minsky cut off his penis. Is that right? How about you, detective? Do you need to fuck me to decide if I'm guilty? <laughs> uh, who is Frankie Centora? I don't know. His name appears 12 times in the diary, and he doesn't show up in any records, so... 
Maybe he was one of Minsky's dealers. One I never met. Well, you wrote it. It's just a name. You should go now. I'm about to go to sleep. I sleep naked. This movie is so thirsty. I'll be in touch. What's your name? Goodman. Your first name? Detective. <laughs> Detective. Cut. I found out it's not very helpful clicking on her because she's in every scene of every movie, right? Like, she's in almost all these clips. So we're just going to get a random clip out of, like, a thousand. And we're not going to be able to tell any context. But if I click on this guy, he's only in this movie, I think. Scene 4A, take three. Bye. Not tonight. I'm a cop. Where's it? Okay. I'm gonna keep doing this guy. Okay. Same scene. So we're already recycling some scenes. I don't even know what the fuck this is about to be about. 20B, take one. Action. You can't talk now. So hold up one hand for no, two for yes. Got that? It's gonna take a little while to dry. Shall we have some fun while we wait? To understand me and Minsky, you have to know what it feels like to completely give yourself over to another person. Are you ready to do that? Quite freeing to give yourself over to another person. Whether you live or die is in their hands. 
takes the weight off. Breathing has a reflex action. I thought that was a cigarette. I'm conscious of how close we are to just dropping dead and dying until we have to think about. Even noticed till now. Art is about being aware Makes of sense. mortality and then transcending it. You're obsessed with dead bodies. You spend all day with them. You're obsessed with the finality of death, but art is about looking beyond it. We know that death is just a transformation from one state to another. You're about to shoot it. I'm gonna be honest. I would only watch this scene for uh, nudity. Or not scene, um, movie for nudity. It sounds really boring, to be honest. It's talking about art. I'm not really an art person. Uh, it sounds like a... Almost like a... I don't know, a romantic... Comedy type, not comedy, like romantic drama. Handful of your seed inside me, and that's new life, though it won't amount to much. The French call me orgasm, the petite mort. And when you die, when you give yourself to another individual, you do die. As an individual, you give yourself to them. You become part of the work, part of their work. And you ever do that? You ever watch a piece of media or like a movie, a game? a uh, television show and you just watch it for the promise of nudity like i don't know if i'm a pervert or something but that's what i do sometimes if the movie is really bad or something but i know there's going to be a nude scene or like someone told me there's going to be a nude scene i'll stick around for it luckily this game is pretty good so we don't have to do that Keep running this until we've knocked the charisma out of you, Carl. Goodman is as handsome as you are, but he's less aware of it. Action. All done? A couple hundred pages left. All that reading, you'll go blind. I personally believe you learn more psychology in a week working tables than you do reading a textbook. Deviant psychology, though? This is New York. How about a wager? Another game. Next customer walks in. We we'll both write down which table they're gonna pick. Deal. Where you get your shirts? They're nice. Kensington Taylor's on 12th Street. I picked some up for my brother. They're expensive. That's okay. My brother's more of a tracksuit and vest kind of guy. Oh, hey, Tony. I got a table for you right over here. Yep, right here. <laughs> I'll get you some coffee, okay? You don't have feelings. All spare and level walk. You're the deviant. Ugh. Anyhow, I don't date cops. Ring, ring. Hey, Goodman. Phone call for you. The precinct. Cut. That's good. Ready to move on to the standing close-ups? Miss Perkins, you can flirt with Carl now. Okay. <laughs> hey, you need some change? Buy your brother a shirt. I 
I wonder what happens in this scene. Scene 19B, take three. I'm gonna make you live forever. <laughs> this is not Don't talk. talk. I hope YouTube doesn't take this down. That'd be really stupid. It's, it's just the game. It's just some nudity. It doesn't... Uh, it allowed gore. They allow, like, literal live animals being slaughtered. What's some man ass, you know? A boob every now and then. Never hurt anybody. Now the rest of it. You know, Minsky used to insist I walk around the studio naked at all times, so he could absorb my form. I was only allowed to sunbathe nude because tan lines ruined everything. He sounded like a psycho. Or an artist. I would like to do something more sculptural. Oh, that's how that works. Okay. I think this leads to the scene of um, them having sex. Why does he look up here? Why is he looking at us? Why is she looking at us? Oh, is that just where the camera is? It's a little weird. I think the camera is just, this is the shot, so they're looking at the camera, but... Maybe the director's up there? I don't know. Your fans like you, please. Samson has been robbed of his strength. <laughs> Do you feel like a new man? I was starting to get used to the hippie look. And now the shade. Your fans like you clean shaven? Mm hmm. Can I have a go? Hmm. Nothing cut his throat. We only have the ending. That's not enough. <laughs> Just a nick. <laughs> I'll grab a tissue. Is this the one we saw? What can you do? What should you do? Yeah, we saw this. You 
I'm just gonna just keep spamming his face until I see something new. Or until until we repeat over and over. Scene 18, rehearsal. Action. The real stuff. Now you know four of my names. I only know one of yours. <laughs> I came to collect some clothes and toast him goodbye. Frankie Aminsky. Both. What is this? Nothing sinister. Kinky, maybe. Just a little. He used to come here and we'd have sex. Oh yeah. Minsky comes from they didn't really do. It's literally her whole character. She just has sex all over the place. Him to compartmentalize it. Did Minsky dress up too? Yes, he was the girl. Like all pictures, he was really a catcher inside. When he was fucking someone, he was only really fucking himself. Everything was about him. Did everyone know about Frankie? No. This was something he trusted me with. You ever wonder why he was so sure of you? He knew I loved him in my way. He told me you hated him. Yeah, that too. Both. You want to understand how this worked? You trust me? What do you want me to do? Nice. And we cut to Club 88 sequence. We're gonna need another bottle. Sure, it wants me to look at the bottle, but I'm gonna look at his dumb face instead. Oh, more nudity. Let's do it. of his face before or after death before they usually have a tube okay so is he going like undercover and sleeping with this girl or something to figure out if she's a murderer and she's killing people and putting masks on their face for this movie plot is what i'm talking about we figure he let himself be cast but the killer cut off the air supply the penis was cut off post-mortem so the condition of the okay, this is the victim he was talking about. It does suggest it was a wreck when this happened, so probably soon after death. Jesus, when does a crime scene begin? A crime scene begins at the point where the suspect changes intent into action. And who had the intent? Much in there about our mutes? Well, nothing incriminating. Some of us in code, though. Mm, might just be doodles. Always has his head in a book, missing what's right in front of his eyes. I think he really thinks she didn't do it. I think he wants to fuck her. <laughs> I don't and think he will. Fucks. Cut. <laughs> He's alive. <laughs> There's a lot of scenes of this guy. Almost like there's a whole movie of him. Scene 40B, take three. Action. Lebanon's personal effects. Minus New York. Where is a confession in there, huh? Thanks.
That was an action filled scene. Wanted to preserve her voice for public. Minsky Studio. There's a heater in the middle of the room. Good when you're drying out. Half dressed from the chase in the rain, half in your drag from the club. Franny approaches, wrapped in a big sheet with a bundle in her hands. Decadent suits you. You think Olga did it? I lied about burning her letters. I told Minsky I did, but I kept them. Wanted to preserve her voice for posterity. Can I just say, I just want to stop here. All of this is fake for this game. Um, Sam Barlow hired all these actors, and they're all acting out a fake movie right now. Or a fake rehearsals, fake movie. I, I, I feel like I'm watching some behind-the-scenes shit from the 1970s. This feels so authentic. These guys are doing a great fucking job. Even the way they're talking kind of sounds like from that period, you know? The 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 film grain, the you know, the lower quality film, um the way they talk, the way they look, everything. Like I feel like I'm just I'm just like lost, I'm immersed in it. I'm just like holy shit. I have to remind myself sometimes, oh, this is a video game. We're supposed to, like, solve a mystery here. She loved him. She begged him to take her back. But she also remembered the bad stuff. She gave a necklace he made her as a gift to a friend. He was so angry, he put a cigarette out in her face. If you look in his green portrait 32, you can see the burn mark. He painted it in. Olga was 15 when they met. In the same way he repainted and repainted to reduce his paintings to pure form, he broke his girls down until they were the forms he wanted. But when he's done with you, you have nothing left. The rest of the world is just negative space. Was he done with you? No. I was different. Slowly, tenderly make love. Sitting up in the glow of the heater. Okay, let's, let's make this exploratory conversation. Marissa, how would you want Carl to touch you if this were you? He should kiss my neck and shoulders, then pull my hair. Carl, how would you want Marissa to touch you? Uh, <laughs> this is all good. I mean, uh, let me think about it, okay. Goodman looks out the studio window. He stops. Sees Olga in the window across the street, looking directly in the studio. Goodman is dumb short. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I was trying to react. There we go. I like how the music gets real loud when you rewind or fast forward. Scene 10A, take two. Oh, is this when they get painted naked or whatever? And with the mask? 
Would you like to come in? Is this like the start of that scene? I think it is. Cut! Help! She's crazy! Too late. Yeah, it's not really helpful to focus on her face. What the fuck? Sorry guys, my heart just jumped out of my chest. Um... What... the fuck... is going on? That scared the shit out of me. Oh my god, that was fucking terrifying. You're going to come in, it's hard to say no. Okay, that is fucking terrifying. What the fuck is going on? Jesus Christ. First of all, I'll reiterate, I fucking hate horror games. I hate horror movies. I don't like being scared. It's not a pleasant feeling for me. I don't get any... I like spicy foods, right? You eat spicy foods because even though it hurts a little bit, it feels good. It like gives you a release of endorphins or whatever the fuck it's called, you know? You, you get that, that chemical release and it feels awesome, even though it hurts. I don't get that feeling from being scared. When I'm scared, I'm just, I don't like it. It's unpleasant for me. I know some people like horror movies. They like that feeling of, <gasps> they like that feeling of shock. They like that feeling of, I don't like it. It really fucking bothers me. It, it makes me unhappy. I don't like being scared. And that scared the fucking shit out of me. What the fuck was that? Oh my god. So it, I rewound because I was trying to get a, a picture of his face so I can keep going. And it fucking did that. It like altered the scene, turned it into a, a different thing. And I assume I can go back and I can fucking look at her face and find more scenes of that woman. And I don't want to, I'm really scared. That was... Jesus Christ, that scared the shit out of me. I don't, even, I don't want to go back there. I really don't. God damn it. Oh, it's been an hour. Okay, this game is like sucking me in too much. That was terrifying. That was absolutely fucking terrifying. Um... Thank you guys so much for watching. No, uh, I don't know, dude. I don't know what else to say. That was fucking terrible. Like, there's gonna be more scenes like that where, like, I'm, oh, I'm gonna go back and find out. Like, I was just, I was on a roll. I was like, oh, we're finding so many new scenes, and I'm like starting to uncover the plot. I like have the names of all these people, and then that shit happens, and now I'm like, what the fuck was that? So that looked like her, but her hair was like. She was almost, like, balding or something. I couldn't tell. I, I was too scared to actually look at her. Uh, clearly. I was, like, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And her hair was, like, messed up. And 
she wasn't paying attention to him at all. She like looked at him and then stared directly at us and told us to come in. Oh, I know I'm gonna have to click on her next. Fuck. I don't want to do that. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for whatever the fuck that was. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.